Hello and welcome back to another NAS review and today we are looking at the DriveStore 4. It is the more affordable end of the Acer Store NAS structure and it's one of the most modern releases they have in that tier. Now this isn't the first DriveStore 4 we've talked about on the channel indeed. This is the second because the first one was this one here at the top. This one here with the light completely reflecting off of my lights here in the studio is the Drive Store 4 Pro. Now throughout the course of this video we are of course reviewing this one down here. We have a full software overview coming up very very soon of uh, the ADM version 4 software. If it's not already live by the time this goes out it should be with you in the next day or so where we go into a lot of the details of what the software can and cannot do. We're going to talk about a lot about it in that video because this system is an ARM, an ARM based processor that is incredibly power efficient but with that you have to bear in mind that there's a reason this is the affordable tier. Now in today's video we're going to talk about this system. Of course we are going to refer to this system quite a lot because these are actually surprisingly similar. Given they're both in the same product family you would think hmm, there must be a huge amount of disparity between them and Realistically, there actually isn't. The price difference of around 70 to maybe 75 nicker between these two systems the amount of differences between them is actually surprisingly small. With this one at the bottom arriving at around 250 quid and this one at the top arriving at about 330 quid. Again, depending on where you shop around. So it's worth bearing in mind that the difference between them is more it's more intangible. It's very hard to describe. I mean, there's the obvious ones about the design, but we will get into a lot more detail about the physical attributes and differences between these two systems throughout the course of this video. So if you have watched the video where I've talked about this device or indeed anyone else's video about the Drive Store 4 Pro, this video is going to be talking about the non-pro. And with that elongated intro to this video up and running, let's take a look at this now. Now, the packaging on this device, again, you're not going to see many of these in your local eShop. So, although um, this device has got lots of external packaging, most of you are never going to see this until you've already purchased it. Nonetheless, I'll always give a bit of credit to a brand that goes the extra mile on making their product look pretty nice on the box. There are just too many brown boxes that these devices arrive in where the brands have just thought well so i'm going to buy this on the internet why make the effort and i like it when brands make the effort because at least it shows that they're invested in what they're doing now if we have a look inside we can have a look at the accessories this device arrives with as this is a four bay nas uh, it's worth highlighting this is a raid enabled system and again that's raid zero raid one raid five raid six raid ten there's a lot to do there in the way you want to utilize your storage on this bear in mind as well this system doesn't need to be fully populated to be used. It can, you can get away with as little as a single hard drive if you choose on them. Here is our accessories. So inside here we have our external PSU, which is a 90 watt external PSU here. And again, there's also the mains power cable included as well. Depending on wherever you buy in the country, you're going to get your own cable. Don't worry, it's not always going to be the UK one. Um, you've got your uh, screws here. These are for installing those um, hard drives inside there. Bear in mind, this system doesn't have trays. It's a non-hot swap system. That's one of the first early differences um, between this and that Pro Series that we talked about. That device has got a removable front panel. Again, from within inside there, you've got four trays, so you can introduce drives without powering the system down. If one of your drives suffers a RAID failure, you can introduce or goes into a degraded state even. You're allowed, able to remove the drive and introduce a new one without powering the system down. This one, on the other hand, is slightly different, if I get that lid on there properly. Um, this one, it's not hot swappable. So once you install the drives, one, two, whatever, if you do want to introduce bigger drives, swap out drives or anything like that, you will be required to power down the system fully. And that will become a lot clearer as the video continues. We've also got our Ethernet cable here. It's a Cat5e cable. Sometimes I will rag on a brand for not including Cat6 at the very least. But this device doesn't take advantage of the 10 GBE, but it does have 2.5 GBE, something I'll talk about. And therefore, this cable is more than suitable. Also, we've got additional screws for those hard drives. Again, two sets there. Again, each bag presumably corresponds to at least two uh, drives each and you've got a clip there for the power cable to make sure that doesn't get removed in error and you've got a quick start guide there as well but again lots of online resources fair play to Acer store their online resources and the, the tutor series uh, presented in a kind of school context and educational side of things is actually really nice not a lot of brands are kind of 
try to emulate that, which is really weird to me, because I think that's quite a nice way to introduce these products that a lot of people have never really experimented with. So inside, we've got lots of lovely hard foam here for this device to protect it in transit. Again, something I do talk about on the channel a lot. These devices predominantly come out of um, you know China, Taiwan, that sort of thing, and a lot of them are going to be traveling globally a lot in pallets and shipments or individually and more and more couriers traveling in between consequently the idea of protecting this from shock damage motion damage in transit is really really important because although there's no hard drives inside this you know these things can happen with cracks with pressure that kind of stuff and just these extra layers of protection where i've seen a lot of brands just go for cardboard innards which take absolutely no real physical impact again much like the box it's a small thing but it's something i will complement a brand on let's get that out of the packaging if that uh, actually let's get that out of shot because that's just going to be annoying let's have a look at this device let's open it up there sorry about the noise would you adam and eve it it doesn't open at the back um let's get into that packaging Makes me look like a fool. Um, look. And there is the chassis. That's the front of it. Let's remove that bit of plastic there. Sorry about the noise. And there is the front of the chassis. Now, this isn't the first time we've seen a store utilize this more affordable chassis. I quite like this nice mesh design thing here on the front. It doesn't have the embossed style of the other device. That one there has that nice angular chassis there and of course the removable front panel we talked about. But we'll leave that on the table there as we go for the remainder of the video because there's gonna be a lot of comparisons throughout the specification where I'm gonna talk about why you're paying less for this or inversely, why you're paying more for that. So. First thing you may see there on the front, we have that USB 3 port there. It's a USB 3.2 uh, Gen 1 port, so 5 gigabits per second there. Um, it's worth bearing in mind once again that when you are utilizing this and that USB port there, you can't really use it for much more than uh, network upgrades there. There is a 2.5 GBE to USB upgrade uh, connection there. On top of that, there is of course USB storage. Whether you're gonna utilize it for external storage, whether you're gonna be utilizing it for um, a backup strategy to back up individual folders or directories or indeed the entire NAS onto a USB drive, uh, on a scheduled rotation and of course there is the expandability of this device with Acer Store arriving with a series of expansion chassis that allow you to connect it to this device via USB and therefore add more storage to your existing RAID array. Some lovely stuff there. And again, USB ports, we have one there on the front and we have one there on the back. And if you look at the Pro Series, the Pro Series again has one on the front with a one touch copy button and on the back two more there so again a couple more usb ports there which i know don't seem like much but in terms of expandability that means you can add more four by expansions to the pro series device over that of the standard device now the cpu inside this device is that realtek rtd 1296 a quad core 1.4 gigahertz arm based processor that's a 64 bit arm processor as well so we can get a lot more done it can deal with snapshots um there is the door that's kind of open to btrs but i wouldn't consider putting btrfs on this with just one gig of memory i would err maybe towards the other one also that cpu supports 4k transcoding natively as well not in plex but certainly within the multimedia applications this arrives in adm4 has kind of scaled up a lot of the file search capabilities, uh, the responsiveness of that graphical user interface and multimedia support as well, which is gonna be incredibly useful for those of you that are looking at systems like this because you're migrating away from uh, online media platforms like Netflix and Hulu and stuff like that. And you've got your existing media collection that you want to host yourself, both for you, your friends, your family, both uh, over DLNA and of course, remotely over the internet. Um, alongside that CPU, which again, same CPU on both those devices, this one also arrives with one gig of DDR4 memory. Now that's the second big difference between these, I'll say the third really big difference between these two devices. This has got one gig of DDR4 memory, cannot be upgraded. This has 
two gig of DDR4 memory cannot be upgraded. Now, why is that important? Um, one gig of DDR4 memory in conjunction with that um, CPU there, it's gonna be great for your storage, your low level use, a little bit of surveillance there on the side, multi-tiered backups, your DLNA stuff there. Um, and even hosting a web server, mail server, that sort of thing. But it's still not a lot, and you're not going to be able to run lots of simultaneous applications on that one gig of memory. On top of that, again, as mentioned, it's going to limit um, or completely exclude you from the likes of taking advantage of the BTRFS over EXT4 file systems. Because again, I wouldn't go in with that with less than two gig anyway. Um, and again, multiple connected users, multiple connected shares. So if you've got shared folders between numerous users using either the client applications for your desktop to create that synchronized folder or create more of a kind of iSCSI target or map drive, multiple connected users, you're gonna have less that you can utilize as well as less in terms of shared folders on one gig of memory than you can on two. So ultimately it means a lower glass ceiling. Um, and that again, will be impacted if you are utilizing multiple, not just multiple connected users, but multiple connected programs at once. If say you were gonna run a no transcoding Plex Media server on this, that's gonna take up a decent little chunk of your available resources, which means if you're running surveillance, you've got four um, surveillance licenses with surveillance center on this. And again, that's utilizing multiple IP cameras there. that it does support thousands of cameras on that platform. It's still worth bearing in mind that's going to be the lion's share of all of your resources gone just with those two services and if you were running backups or if you were running any kind of synchronized drive activity they're all going to go and although you have access to snapshots it will support less snapshots there and if you run um encryption uh, the impact of running an encrypted system totally which is already going to lower performance a little bit compared with non-encrypted performance it's going to be more of an impact on that one gig of memory all the while with the system utilizing a big chunk of that memory as well so again that price difference is if not justified it's clearly quite apparent where that does come from on these systems now i mentioned this system also supports uh, that raid functionality raid 0 raid 1 raid 5 raid 6 raid 10 you can run this on a single hard drive if you choose and of course if you take advantage of more comprehensive raid configurations that is going to have its impact on the system a little bit raid 5s and raid 6s I don't have the high performance of a RAID 0 or a RAID 1, but they have more safety nets uh, and more opportunities for um, keeping your system moving and still having access to that data. But again, one gig of data, uh, sorry, one gig of memory is not a huge amount to be dealing with on a four bay system. And although ADM and the system as a whole is built around the idea of efficiency, it's still a bit of, it potentially is gonna be a bottleneck for a number of you. Now. We've got ventilation there on the base of the system, but there's not a huge amount of ventilation all the way around. It takes advantage of a more tunneled approach to ventilation with a, quite a large rear mounted fan there. It's definitely more noisy than the two bay and stuff like that, but it's still not an overall noisy box. It's a low impact, low ambient noise device. That 90 watt PSU doesn't mean it's gonna use 90 watts all the time. Of course not. The system utilizes 12.3 uh, watts uh, reported by Asystore themselves whilst in active use and 6.04 watts whilst in idle. That means when you're not interacting at the period of time, the system will go into a kind of low waiting mode, which is kind of the whole point of cloud systems to be there when you need them and when you don't need them to sit down and shut up. And this does a good job of that. And although it doesn't have um, that easy hot swap capability, so if there are RAID issues, you're going to have to power the device down. There is support of numerous UPSs and other storage systems on this that you can take advantage of remotely or locally. Now, in terms of connections, we have here on the rear, we've mentioned that USB port, but we have there at the bottom 2.5 GBE. For those that aren't aware, uh, most network connectivity in your home or office environment at the basic level is going to be one gigabit Ethernet, which is around 109 uh, megabytes per second at the very, very top end. One, uh, one gigabit Ethernet, particularly on CAT or RJ45 copper, has been around literally for decades. And therefore, it is easy to wonder why have things moved forward. Well, they have. They simply have. It's just taking a lot longer than a lot of people anticipated. Now, Asus Door was one of the first brands, at least as far as 
um, NASA was concerned to embrace 2.5 GBE, which unsurprisingly is two and a half times that of traditional 1 GBE, allowing up to 260 to 270 megabytes per second external, external connectivity. This device will allow you to get more external performance at a price point that is identical to, and in some cases less than, one gigabit Ethernet counterparts, which means more bandwidth for your connected users, more bandwidth to be shared for backups, and more data going in, data going out. Bear in mind, though, you will need to have 2.5 GPU ports at least on your switch in order to channel that 2.5 gigabit to be shared via your connected 1 GPU users, or take advantage of that USB adapter I mentioned earlier. This device arriving at that price point of 250, 255 nicker, depending on where you shop around, to include 2.5 GBE is really, really impressive. For a four-way RAID enabled box, you know, you can't really fault it. And this being 2.5 GBE and an affordable RAID 5 solution is already going to tick a lot of boxes for people. Now, this device, again, between the two of them, don't think that there's any disparity there in terms of network connections. This only has the one port there as well. So you wouldn't, you're not missing out on any kind of link aggregation or, you know, lag support along the way there. And ultimately, when looking at this device, as long as you stay within that mindset that you're looking at an affordable solution, if you stay within that mindset that you are, get, you are saving a bit of money to have a lower glass ceiling, as long as you bear that in mind, this is going to be a NAS that will serve you very, very well. ADM has improved vastly over its previous iterations. Again, we, if it's not already live, there will be a full ADM review very, very, very soon. And although it's still not as good as I think it can be, with no AI-supported photo services on there currently, and the surveillance platform may be looking a little dated, in most other ways, it is still a great piece of software that a number of you who are moving away from you know Billy Basic, WD MyCloud and Buffalo NAS systems which you know were sturdy devices but their software was awfully uninspiring and not really diverse. ADM will come as an incredible breath of fresh air with numerous clients for mobile platforms, desktop platforms and more as well as support for third party multimedia streaming surveillance platforms, business applications and containers on this there's a lot to get on with. Just make sure you stay in that frame of mind. If you've got a bit more money to spend or you want a little bit more bang for your buck, a little bit more performance, a little bit more graphical capability, look at the Locker Store and the Nimble Store series. You get a lot more from them with their um, x86 processors. But with this, what you are looking at is excellent value and dare I say, some of the best value that the brand has put out for a long time. Thank you so much for watching. There should be a full review over on NAS Compares linked in the description. A lot more photos, a lot more detail. Check it out. And of course, if you've enjoyed this, click like. It helps me understand what I've done right, what I've done wrong, and hopefully make each video better than the last. Click subscribe to learn more about NAS as more videos go live. And take advantage of the free advice section over on NAS Compares linked in the description. It's made by two guys, me and Eddie the Web Guy. It's completely for free. It's humans, we'll answer every email, it might take six a day or so, we are human beings, but again, for free data storage and network advice, what you got to lose? Thank you so much for watching, I will see you next time.